Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk with you all about a growing and concerning trend that I'm seeing across the piercing industry. More and more often I am seeing studios either outright refuse to offer services for minors or incredibly limit the ages that they will offer these piercings for. As many of you know, I'm currently on hiatus from piercing. I'm beginning to slowly merge out of that hiatus with doing different guest spots around the country. And as I've been reaching out and contacting studios about guesting, a common refrain has been, don't worry about age limitations, we're only piercing 18 and up right now. Or we're currently only piercing 15 and up, but if you don't wanna work on minors, we won't allow you to be scheduled for those clients. And this is a big shift from three and five years ago when many studios offered ages four or five and up and were super proud and excited to be offering safe, healthy, viable first earlobe piercings for younger kids. In 2015, you couldn't go on a studio's Instagram page or social media without seeing beautiful photos of smiling little ones with brand new ear piercings, usually with those super cute neo metal flowers anodized some kind of fun color, and they were on every single studio's pages, and I loved it. I loved that we were showing children safe experiences surrounding body piercing, healthy experiences surrounding body piercing, and oftentimes big experiences surrounding consent bravery, and overcoming something that you're afraid of. I had my ears first pierced when I was a baby and then again as a young child and I had my first facial piercing. I had my nostril done at about 14. If studios hadn't been piercing my age range, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know that I would be the person that I am today and have had the experiences that I've had if I wasn't able to explore body piercing at that age. So what's happening? What is happening that studios are starting to refuse outright to work on minors at all or severely limit their services? And the answer, unfortunately, is the parents. Now that's not to say that the kids aren't also part of the issue and as a body piercer I've had more than my fair share of rude or entitled teenagers that were not pleasant to work with or teenagers who just didn't understand how processes like making an appointment and confirming paperwork and all of the rules that go into doing something like this work. And frankly, I don't necessarily expect them to. They're a teen. They don't have to make their own doctor's appointments, make their own DMV appointments, go and do things like this. They don't have ex the experience making appointments that adults do. So it is very frustrating when teens make these mistakes, but it's not the type of frustration that makes me want to never pierce anyone that age ever again. The parents are a different story. All across the country, piercers are dealing with emotional and verbal abuse and sometimes outright physical abuse from customers in their studios. And it is no stretch to say that the vast majority of these interactions are happening with parents. One of the biggest issues that I have personally experienced and that I see other piercers talk about online is parents and ID policies. In most states and with most insurance companies, some form of identification is required to pierce a minor. This is so that we can prove that the parent and child in front of us are actually parent and child and that the adult with the minor has the legal grounds to consent to this minor to get a piercing. And this is to prevent us from lawsuits and to follow local laws. This is so your kid can't have their friend's cool older sister take them into a studio and get their face tattooed at 15 because, oh, this adult that I'm with said that it's okay. In America, it has to be a parent or legal guardian that signs for a piercing. And we can't just accept, oh, I'm this person's parent as proof. We typically need documentation like birth certificates, state IDs, school IDs, things of that nature. It varies state to state and insurance company to insurance company. I actually have a whole blog post about it on my website that I will link in the comments down below. 
Most studios go above and beyond to make their ID policies accessible to clients. I know at my last studio, we had our ID policies listed on our website. We posted about them on our Instagram. Clients who scheduled appointments were sent an email going over the ID policies. And at the time of booking the appointment, if they were scheduling the appointment for a minor, there was a checklist that they had to agree to that reviewed ID policies. Despite all of this, a couple times a month, I would still have a parent and child come in that did not have the appropriate identification and who would say, well, I didn't know. You didn't make it clear enough to me that I needed this. And sometimes they'll just get huffy and upset and you know, I get it. It sucks to have planned for this day to drive all the way out to a studio and to not have something you need and not be able to get the service done. I get it, it sucks. So I understand a little bit of huffiness or discontent. What I don't understand and what isn't acceptable is the parents who will demand that we pierce their minor anyway. The parents who will yell and scream and call us names for refusing to do so. The parents who have thrown drinks at me over following the law in my state. And it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Almost every week in forums for piercers online, I see piercers discussing parents being verbally abusive to them or their staff, studios discussing getting terrible one-star reviews for following their state law or their insurance company's set forth policy and trying to keep minors safe and not having them get pierced with whatever adult they can find. I see piercers talking about how stressful they find it to pierce minors of any age, not because the minor is difficult or unpleasant to work with, but because the parent is unacceptable. At my last studio, we had a parent freak out so badly over ID policy that she made our piercer cry, screaming at her and calling her names. Her daughter ended up emailing the studio and apologizing. She said that her mom was a real Karen and was like this all the time, and she was so sorry that we had to deal with it. And honestly, it's a growing trend that I see. More often than not, my younger clients, anywhere from teens to mid to late 20s, are very polite and respectful. They understand that customer service workers are customer service workers. And even when things go wrong or something gets forgotten, even if they're disappointed or upset, they're still polite and respectful. Whereas it's my older clients in the 50s and 60s, especially parents or relatives of the client getting the work done, who have zero patience, who act with zero respect, and who are the quickest to become rude and irate and threatening. And it's a very difficult position that it leaves piercers in, because on one hand, most piercers do genuinely want to provide these services. I love working with teens and little kids. I, I have a special soft spot in my heart for the, the 12 to 17 age range. That was the age that I was when I started getting a lot of my piercings. I did not have a great experience in middle school and high school. I did not have an easy go of it. And piercings were a huge form of self-expression, self-love and self-confidence to me during that time. And I see it have those same effects on teens these days. On the flip side though, I don't like going into work and getting called names and getting screamed at and cursed at. I don't like the feeling of dread that sits in my stomach sometimes when I see that I have a young child's earlobe piercings on the book. Not that I'm dreading piercing them, but in the back of my mind I'm thinking, will the parent bring all the documentation? Did they get the voicemail we left reminding them about ID? If they forgot something, are they going to yell and scream and demand that we do it anyway? If they did remember everything and we're back in the piercing room and working, are they going to allow me to work or are they going to talk over me and try and control the situation? Dads especially are the worst about that. I have unfortunately kicked many a father out of my piercing room because his daughter is getting pierced and she's nervous, which is normal, and the dads will go, oh, it's gonna hurt real bad, or that's a real big needle, and they're intentionally trying to scare their children and make the process harder than is necessary. And that's heartbreaking. And then the piercers are the ones left having to calm down the scared and frightened child and still get through with the piercing. And especially when it's a real little kid, no parent wants to see them leave with one earlobe piercing, but it's very hard to convince them to get that second one after their dad just terrified them. 
And yes, this is something that I see happen often. This was a growing issue in the piercing industry pre-COVID, but since COVID-19 has happened, across the board, customer service workers have been experiencing unprecedented levels of violence, vitriol, and just overall terrible disrespectful behavior in the workplace, and piercing is no exception. What was an a growing issue but still a controllable issue in 2019 has become such a major problem for many studios that they're simply closing their doors to these services. Some of the piercers who I know who are the most phenomenal piercers at working with children and teens now no longer work on under 18 at all. And frankly, I cannot fully fault them when they have dealt with so many offenses, so much negativity, and so much damage from parents of these children that they don't want to deal with it. I know that if the industry moves away from offering piercings for minors, especially teens, that they're just going to end up doing it themselves at home. As much as we'd like to educate about the risks of home done piercing and encourage kids to go to studios, we can say it till we're blue in the face, but if there's no studios for those kids to go to to get safe piercings, they're not just going to wait till they turn 18. This situation feels like a catch-22 that I frankly don't have an answer for. I would love to see more studios offering piercings for younger ages and for teens, but at the same time, I cannot fault a studio for doing what it feels it has to to protect its employees. And honestly, at my last studio, I don't know that I would have ever gone back to piercing the younger ages. I was offering services for 12 and up, but it was the parents of the very little kids who were the most abusive. It was a father of a young one who threw a cup of coffee in my face because they didn't bring the birth certificate and tried to tell me that I was lying when I showed him the emails the studio sent him, the information printed online, and the schedule booking where he checked off that he would bring this identification. I wish I was sitting down to film this video for you and I had like a concise answer or a plan of action that we could do to change this or improve this, uh, but I don't. I'm making this video to bring awareness to this being a problem that occurs, to talk about why you'll see increasingly studios that aren't going to work on minors and teens, and also most importantly to remind folks to please be nice to your customer service workers. There's never any need to become violent, to threaten customer service workers, or to scream and yell over issues like that. We should be setting examples for our children of how to solve these problems with maturity. We should also be setting examples for our children about how to handle situations like appointments. And quite frankly, just as an addendum, a large part of why this is an issue is that I see a lot of parents who are attempting to teach their children this by having them book the appointment themselves, and when their teens or children make a mistake because they're learning how to do this and mistakes are normal and they show up and they forgot their birth certificate or they forgot something that they needed or they forgot to tell their parents something about the appointment, the parent doesn't punish the teen with it, they yell at us and at the staff. And it really should have been the parent's job to double check what the teen was doing and make sure they brought that stuff. And sometimes the parents are very polite and respectful to us, but they use it as a gotcha moment for their teen. Their teen forgot to bring their ID and the parent goes, well, I guess you can't get the piercing now today. And while I'm glad that the parent is teaching that kid a lesson, they're doing it at my expense. That's now an appointment that I had scheduled for doing a full piercing service. And since you're not getting pierced, we, myself, the piercer and the studio are not going to make any money at all. You've just damaged the livelihood of your service workers to teach your kid a lesson about reading the fine print. And I just don't really think that we should be collateral damage. If you're going to have your kid book the appointment, double check it before the day of and make sure that you're not going to hurt a service worker in your efforts to teach your kid about this stuff. I would love to see this issue resolved, but unfortunately, I really think the only way that that's going to happen is if we see parents becoming more respectful and more understanding with customer service workers and more willing to take the time to read information like the emails that we get and the information at the time of booking. Most of us are so desensitized to those policies online that we skim through and hit yes without actually reading what we're agreeing to. And then we show up the day of and we're upset because we forgot something. Please. Be nice to your customer service workers, be nice to your piercers, to your hairstylists, to your nail techs. Please read the information that they provide for you and make sure that you're prepared before coming in for appointments. 
what do y'all think? Is there more piercers could be doing to make this easier or better? Is there something we should do that could help with that? Or is it all on the responsibility of the parents for being rude and behaving the way they are? How do we make what's needed for these appointments more clear? And also, how do we protect piercers from threats and violence from parents and customers who are disgruntled over simple things like that? I don't have the answer. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. And if you'd like me to talk more about issues like this in the industry um, or issues that affect teens and children when it comes to piercings or just crazy customer service stories, uh, let me know in the comments down below. As per usual, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and I'm sure we will hang out and chat again soon. Bye.